Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, the first gamble of the 324 Necropolis League. And uh, yeah, today we are going to visit an old friend of mine. I met him the first time in the Affliction League. His name is the Nameless Seer. And yeah, he's like a good guy because every time you see him, he's always bringing presents. He's like Christmas, like Santa Claus, something like that. You know, you always get free, free items, free, uh, free uniques. And I got him today early in the league. I think the first day I met him like four times while mapping, and and he got me or he gave me like stuff worth like ten divines. That was a very nice start to begin with. But it essentially got rarer. I think I've never seen him ever since. Maybe he just went to the other people and, and gave them all the items. But I don't mind. I got my good start, right? And today we're going to try out and force him, okay? There is a scarab that is called the Reliquary Scarab of Vision, which says area contains the Nameless Seer. So we're gonna run 100 strand maps with the Nameless Seer and just write down everything that he will give us, okay? And hopefully we're gonna make profit. Let's take a look at the write down. We have 100 times the Nameless Seer by Agnostic. I really like this name because Agnostic, best keystone in this game. So basically, just an, an average like T60 map, whatever is like five chaos. I did roll them. This is just like a, a side note right now. Um, the gamble is all about um, just running this um, scarab, right? I personally, I just said, you know what? If I do 100 maps, why should I just um, run them white with the Nameless here? I'll just go ahead and farm experience. So I have here an Atlas tree that involves um, Breach. We have like the, the Eater of Worlds as well as a bunch of uh, Shrine Notes, Strongbox and stuff like that. So I'm running this with the, the Nameless Seer, 30% increased experience uh, for Shrine buffs and then four additional breaches with the Edo of World. So while running the 100 maps, uh, I hopefully make uh, some quite nice uh, experience and some nice profit on top of that. So the gamble itself, as I said, is only the map and the Nameless Seer and what do we get out of it. And the random uh, map is about five chaos. The Nameless uh, Seer Scarab is about one divine a piece. Unless you buy in the bulk, it's like one and a half divine. So basically, uh, 100 of these would be around about 100 divines investment, 103 uh, if you buy them one by one, or like 150 divine, uh, divines roundabout uh, for the entire tap over here, right? Not ex uh, including the experience shrine game, um, stuff like that. Good, and I'm gonna write down every time he gives me something, even though if it's a worm small, the best item in the game, then it's just a zero divines, you know, or a 0 0.01, whatever uh, a worm small will go for. If it's mage blood or headhunter, you know, big man. No, wait, headhunter is actually. A budget item this league, right? 20 divines or something. Yeah, people are abusing stuff all uh, all day long. I don't care about that. But we're going to write on everything. And then in the end of the day, we're going to see if we make profit. Obviously, we're going to run the first map together. And then I'm going to run the other 99. Uh, and then we're going to see us again with the, the final outcome. And how much money did we make? Or how much did we lose? So let's pop in. I would say the first map. Uh, take like a 20 stack of each here. And uh, yeah, just run the first maps um, until we get the first tier and uh, and go from there, I guess. So double breach experience, and we're gonna run this with domination for extra shrines with this Eat of Worlds. I think we're fine. All right, but what if there is a nameless seer with a nameless seer scarab? Is it like twin brothers? Does he offer like twice the amount of items? Okay, I have no idea. We're just gonna uh, go right away. Um, the build I'm playing here is my my life stacking burning era of vigor elementalist, and yeah, this build is actually super fun, very strong. I think this might actually be one of the best ignite builds that I've played so far. It's like my my personal opinion, and I'm an EK ignite uh, enjoyer and lover. But um, you know. I hope the sound is not too loud. Let me actually quickly fix that as soon as the breach here is dead. <laughs> it's like so comfort to just sh uh, shoot forward. You have your ignite prolifs going off. You just, yeah, destroy everything. Um, build is still in the early stages or let's say in the mid stages, you know, still rocking the, the gold rim. So there's like tons of stuff that need to be crafted in the upcoming days. But so far, build has been an absolute pleasure, man. It's... It just destroys, man. It just literally destroys everything. Um, haven't tried a T17 yet, but probably soon. Soon, TM. So, but I don't want to get this video too long. So, oh, there it is. Nameless here. There it is. My good old friend. So, let's quickly uh, clear a little bit over here so we're not getting destroyed. 
and see if he got the first mage blood over here. Wait, who is imprisoning me? Fuck off. No. There it is. Purchase item. So, and we got... Yeah. Completely shit on. What is, what is the most expensive item here? Is it a, a lightning coil? But it's like 10c, right? So it's a 10c item. The poor choice, maybe. 7c. Victarios. Nothing. Voidbringer. Gravebind. 15c. Wow, that's crazy. Stormfiring. So, basically, the Gravebind is what I'm seeing here. Lion Eyes is, like, not worth anything. So, yeah, we take the Gravebind, and now we have to calculate what is, um... 160 times, um... Times... Yeah, god damn it, dude, math. Uh, divided by 50, it's like 0. Point, yeah, it's, it's about, let's say, 0. 0.11 divines for this uh, beautiful item. And yeah, that's what we're gonna do the entire day and tomorrow and probably in three days. I have no idea how long this is gonna take. I'm gonna just enjoy mapping now with my beautiful Ignite build and then we're gonna see us again after 100 maps and see how much money did we potentially make or lose. All right, it has been one and a half days of grinding. Basically, let's say a 12-hour session or something to run these uh, 100 maps with the experience shrine. Obviously, this can be a lot faster if you just uh, seer and go, just throw in any map, just throw in the seer. Once you get it, pick the item and then leave and just do it like that. Or the way I did it with the strand maps, with the experience shrine and stuff like that, I managed to go from level 95 to level 99 and 75%. I was hoping to get level 100. I did die one single time thanks to a crash, but that will be 85%. So I think uh, after I'm done with the video, I'm just gonna continue um, grinding a couple maps and go level 100 with that. So in that case, it is pretty good. All right, what did we get in 100 Nameless Seer? So this is basically the write down. As you see, um, as I said, the current uh, the investment was about 100 divines. Um, every red number here means I got less than the uh, what I spent. Um, the orange number is breaks even. So if I say I spend a divine for um, for the nameless seer scarab, um, getting an item that is worth a divine back is basically the orange number. And then the green numbers are actually the one that gave me profit. Whether it was 1.3 divines, whether it was uh, three divines, or even more than that. And I, I gotta say, even though, um, let me quickly see, if we said we spent 16,000 and we made this, so we, we basically lost about 9,000 chaos, which sounds pretty, pretty bad. And obviously in the way I did it here, it is because we lost 60 divines or 50 something. Let me put thing away here. Um, but still, I think this is a good gamble. And there is many reasons for that. Let's take a look at the uh, loot tab over here, which is, this is basically what I got just from grinding the maps. And here is the, the uniques that I've got. So all of these items here are from the Nameless Seer. And you're going to see there is a bunch of rare items, you know? I mean, not saying like Omega T0 items or stuff like that, but we got like, for example, um, the fourth bow we got three times. We got um, Brass Dome, I think, is, is a more rarer item. Uh, we got that two times. Um, what is that? There is two ages in here. There is um, even Grootkull's uh, pelt, which is also a very rare item, in my opinion. Uh, I got one time. Um, I got two Rislada's coils, or even three. I have never picked them because I think um, there were like better um, options there, right? But the big winner here was obviously number 68, which was a Squire Shield. And the Squire Shield back from yesterday was, I think, 7.7 .7 Divines. I don't know what it is right now. Um... 4.5, okay, they're dropping hard right now. Doesn't really matter. I made the price checks every time uh, this item dropped. I, I price checked it. So at this point, when it dropped, it was 7.7. .7, but there is other items that are obviously rising in price. So, um, yeah, I think there is a lot of rare items. And the potential of making profit with this is actually reasonable okay yes i did lose but in the end of the day i was the guy gambling i'm not known for having good rng in the gambling videos and i swear to god i i saw cute dog doing um, some um, nameless here and go uh, like yesterday or something or today and uh, after eight runs he got a headhunter and a headhunter currently is like 50 divines or something or maybe more maybe less i have no idea um but that means it, it actually breaks even already so getting a mage but obviously will big time uh, profit you 
but I feel like I got a lot of like super rare items. For example, a Mjolnir, right? It's not like the craziest item, but I know for a fact this is like a very rare item, right? And when there is rare items in a drop pool, that also means that the chance of getting something like a Squire Shield, like a Mage Belt, like a Headhunter and like uh, other things like Dragon Flang um, amulets or uh, yeah, stuff like that is there. Also Diala's over here, you know, a Covenant, you know, all these items could be potentially very, very rare. And obviously on the third run, I got even a Rakietus Dance that was like the first profitable item. So I would say I was just very unlucky um, but you can do better, and I think this might be a decent gamble, okay? Just if you if you not have, like, my kind of RNG, right? But overall, very fun to do, actually. And as I said, I think um, another reason... There is actually multiple reasons why I think this is good. First of all, I just think I was unlucky. Second, they fixed the, um, the Rogue Exile T17 Hyper Giga Farm. Somebody like Fopgun made, like, 10 mirrors... Uh, in one single grinding session, which is actually insane. And I think those strategies, those um, MFers, um, Magic Finder, obviously, um, those were the reason why something like a Mage Blood um, went down to like 100 divines, something like a Headhunter went down to like 20 divines or something, right? Um, this got fixed. It's now no longer possible to drop that insane amount of like rarity loot, stuff like that, you know, and uh, that's also the reason why something like Headhunter like doubled in price overnight, Mage Blood doubled in price overnight, and I think if you just wait one or two days and then start selling the loot, you probably get like a lot more currency uh, out of that than what I got. So for me, it's like a 45 divines. Um, what this current tap is worth with a couple of high res and stuff. So there is rare items in here. And I think you just need a bit more luck than I do. And I guess this would be actually very profitable. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And see you in the next video.